Welcome to worship this morning at uh, Zion. We, the, the many, the, the proud, the braver of storms, made it out this morning. Uh, just one announcement that is in the bulletin that I'd like to highlight, and uh, that's an invitation to us all to the uh, pancake breakfast at the Woodville Legion following our worship and our fellowship time today. So you can, you can do it all. You know, you can go down there for fellowship time and a cup of coffee and a little chat. And then after you have readied yourself for the winter storms, then you can head down the street to the, uh, to the Legion. And I know that uh, there are people there waiting to serve us as we speak. So we, uh, we look forward to that time together as well. We continue our worship now as we sing our gathering hymn. Now all the vault of heaven resounds, would you please stand as we sing hymn number 367. of the word is found in the front portion of our hymnal uh, beginning on page 211 
and we confess our sins. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in our sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christe eleison. Christ, have mercy. Kyrie eleison. Lord, have mercy. In the highest glory to God, glory to God, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your peace to God's people on earth. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest. Glory to God, glory to God, and peace to God's people on earth. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit. Glory to God, glory to God.
to God in the highest. Glory to God, glory to God, and peace to God's people on earth, and peace to God's people on earth. Our prayer of the day is printed in our worship folder. Please join me as we pray. Eternal and all-merciful God, with all the angels and all the saints, we laud your majesty and might. By the resurrection of your Son, show yourself to us and inspire us to follow Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We sing together the Alleluia on page 216 as we prepare to hear God's word. be seated. Good morning. Our first reading this morning is from Revelation chapter 5 verses 11 through 14. Then I looked and heard the voice of many angels, numbering thousands upon thousands, and 10,000 times 10,000. They encircled the throne and the living creatures and the elders. In a loud voice they were saying, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on the sea and all that is in them saying, to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever. The four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshipped. Ten thousand times ten thousand would be a hundred million. A hundred million. numbering these are angels. Our next reading is from the Gospel of John, chapter 21, verses 1 through 19. Jesus asks Peter if he loves him three times. When Jesus was arrested, Peter denies he was a disciple three times. And I read, after Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee, it happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, also known as Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them, and they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, 
But that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, it is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off, and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from the shore, about a hundred yards. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you have just caught. Simon Peter climbed aboard and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153. But even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask him, who, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread, and gave it to them, and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Pe Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, follow me. Here ends the, the reading. Oh, 
of bliss to bear the dreadful curse for my soul for my soul to bear the dreadful curse for my soul when I was sinking down sinking down sinking down when I was sinking down sinking down when I was sinking down beneath God's righteous crown Christ laid aside his crown for my soul for my soul Christ laid aside his crown for my soul to God and to the Lamb I will sing I will sing to God and to the Lamb I will sing to God and to the Lamb who is the great I am I will sing, I will sing, while millions join the theme, I will sing. And when from death I'm free, I'll sing on, I'll sing on. And when from death I'm free, I'll sing on. From death I'm free, I'll sing God's love for me, and through eternity I'll sing on, I'll sing on, and through eternity I'll sing on. I want to invite our kids to come up at this time. We're going to chat a little bit. Hey! No prize for getting up here first, but you win the prize. I do that all the time. I make it sound real exciting, don't I? No prize. Zippity doo dah. Good to be together again. I was gone last Sunday, and uh, and I missed you guys. I was I was thinking about this place and and the people who gather here week after week. I was over in uh, Minneapolis with a bunch of our confirmation kids, and we were we were uh, working with people who were homeless and people who were hungry. Uh, a very good experience knowing that we could help and learning a little bit about uh, the struggle that many many people have in this life so let's see today we're going to talk about chores chores you know what chores are chores if you help out at home with something is there something that you do uh, on a regular basis at home that helps out around the house. What do you do? What do you do? You crush cans. Good job. That's a good job to have. Other tasks that you do at home? You pick up stuff? That's very important. I'm glad you do. Yes. Clean your room. Good for you. Good for everybody, maybe. I don't know. Uh, what else? What kind of things do you do to help out at home? Do dishes, yes. Yep. Wash and wipe kind of thing. Yep. Very good. Yes. Get the mail. Get the mail. Very good. Yeah. Feed the dog. Feed the dog. Gotta feed the dog. What do you guys do to help out at home? Make your beds, yes. A very good thing. And washing your clothes, yes. 
You do the laundry on a regular basis at home? Yeah, I'm glad you do. See, there are people out here who would like to have you in their house every once in a while to do the laundry. Well, Jesus asked his disciples, you know, his disciples were like his best friends, right? He asked them to do something for him. He said, I need you to go and make disciples of all nations. It's kind of like being a Sunday school teacher, I think. Um, he said, I need you to baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. I remember many of your baptisms. Just an amazing thing, I do. Um, and Jesus said, I, I want you to tell, to teach others, to tell other people what I have done. So that's what he wanted them to do. That was sort of like his chore list for them. And so, since Jesus asked them, what did they do? What do you think? What did they do? I'll tell you what they did. They went fishing. What? Didn't you do your chores? Didn't you... What? Didn't you do your chores? Jesus said. No, he didn't. He didn't say that. But he came to them again, and he says, remember, I've got some chores for you. And they said, okay, yep, yep, yep. And so a little later, he checked in on them again, and so did you do your chores? What did Jesus, or what did the disciples say? No, well, we... Not exactly all of them, or any of them, but we did go fishing. <laughs> mm. So did Jesus get mad at them? Did he get angry? Did he shake his finger at them and say, I, I've told you once, I've told you a million times? No. Jesus came to them and he said, friends. Friends, you are my friends. And then he told them again, I've got some things I need you to do. And then they did it. That's an amazing thing. They did it. The, the Bible reading today says because they loved him and because he loved them. Um, maybe we do things for God because we love God. We know that God loves us. Maybe we do things to help out the people around us because we love them too. Mom and dad, grandma, whoever we help, we do it because we love them. And they love us. We know that, right? Yep. Your parents love you. The people around you love you. Um, let's take a moment to pray. Thank you, God, for this... Uh, day that, that you've given to us and the time that we have together. It's good to be together. And it's good to hear of your great, great love. Help us to love you more and more and more every single day. And help us to go where you send us. And help us to do what you have told us to do. We live in your name, Jesus. We go out into this world in your name. And uh, everything we give to you, in your name we pray. Amen. Good to see you all. You may be seated. <clears throat> so today we read again from the Gospel of John. And this reading from the Gospel of John we heard today is shortly after Jesus' resurrection. It is shortly after Easter Sunday, and the disciples were fishing. In John chapter 20, we read that the disciples had just recently seen Jesus on two separate occasions, that he came to them, and they were afraid, and he said, Peace be with you, and I send you, and 
On the second of those occasions, he even showed himself to Thomas, doubting Thomas, we call him sometimes, and he says, Thomas, put your hand into the holes in my hands and feet and reach into my side where the spear went because I want you to believe. Jesus wanted him to believe. He didn't give him a lecture. <laughs> he didn't shake his finger at him. He didn't bawl him out. He said, touch me. Thomas, I want you to believe. That was on the second time. And he says, now go and do what I have told you to do. So they went fishing. <laughs> I just, I think this is kind of a funny story in a way. Because they knew what was important. They knew what needed to be done. They had just seen the resurrection of the dead. Wow! What more do you need to see? Seeing a little sunshine would be nice. You know, we're all begging for that. But seeing the resurrection of the dead. And then you say, huh, let's go fishing. <laughs> Not what you would expect. Well, they did believe that there is new life in Jesus' name. They did believe that Jesus was raised from the dead. And Jesus said, as the Father has sent me, now I am sending you, really, John chapter 20, verse 21. That's what happened in that chapter. Now, one chapter later, John chapter 21, they are fishing, and that was a good job. It was a good, reputable job for people who lived in that time and in that location. They were not just wetting a line, just getting away from it all for a while. They were working, and they were working hard. But now, bonus points. I know how you all love bonus points. For anyone who can recall to mind what Jesus told them they should be doing. Now, I just told our young people up here Jesus, and this is, a, this is a little tricky. It's a bit of a tough question because the question comes out of John chapter 21, but the answer comes out of Matthew chapter 28. And some of you say, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The very end of Matthew. So the answer comes there. Jesus sent his disciples out into the world so they could make disciples of all nations so they could baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and so that they could teach others everything Jesus had commanded them. Three tasks that they had been given. So they were sent to make disciples, to baptize, and to teach. But we are told they were fishing. They could have argued I suppose, that while they were out on the water, they were actually making disciples. And they could, I suppose, say what many Sunday fishermen have said, that they can worship God better in a boat. Actually, you know that this part of the building is called a nave, from which we get the word navy. It is in the shape of an upside-down boat. So consider yourself fishing right now. Enjoy the sunshine. and Enjoy that tug on your line. That's true. This is the nave, this building. And if you go like this, I hope we never do, but whoop, like that, it is intended to look like a boat. That was just bonus information. That was not bonus points. But anyway, where were we now? <laughs> Soaking in the sun. But let's give the Spirit a chance here. I believe that people can worship God in a boat. I do. I also believe that there is a benefit for us to be together as we hear God's Word, as we pray together, as we connect with each other, sit side by side and rub shoulders, and we become one in the body of Christ. We need each other. 
So it's all good, but it's all good, okay? <laughs> We can only speculate about what the disciples were thinking and why they were fishing instead of doing what Jesus had told them to do. But in this instance, I'm not going to cut them all the slack in the world because it is undeniably true that the disciples were not baptizing. That's one thing Jesus asked them to do. It is undeniably true that in this situation, they were not making disciples, they were not preaching, they were not teaching, as Jesus had commanded them to do. They were fishing. So Jesus stands on the shore. They didn't recognize him at first, and he says, friends, <laughs> oh, friends, Picture him a football field away, standing on the shore, and they are tired. They've been working all night long. They are not fresh of eye and fresh of mind. They didn't know who was calling them friends. And Jesus said, any fish? <laughs> he knew they didn't have any fish, nothing in their nets, but it seems to me that Jesus really did want to help them out. He wanted them to catch fish because, after all, that's what they wanted to do. They wanted to catch some fish. So let's get on with it, Jesus says. Just listen to me for a moment, again. And I think something must have started to click with these disciples because I cannot imagine that they would listen to just some stranger on the shore sewing, saying, oh, I've, I've got a good idea for you. The fish aren't on that side of the boat. They're on that side of the boat. Kind of sounds like an Ole and Swen joke, doesn't it? But they did what Jesus told them to do, and it really worked. They caught the fish they wanted. In fact, they caught more than they could handle when they listened to Jesus. And as they did as he told them, the blessings began to flow. It's just amazing to me, the abundance of what happened when they believed, when they listened to Jesus. But we all know that Jesus, his main agenda that day really was not just providing fish for fishermen. It was most important that these disciples, these fishing and not preaching disciples, these fishing and not baptizing disciples, these fishing and not teaching disciples should be catching something. They should be catching faith because they had work to do and it was a very different work than what they were currently doing. In John 20, Jesus wanted doubting Thomas to believe, and as they all believed, Jesus sent them out. Now in John 21, Jesus wants the seven fishing disciples, including Thomas again, to believe. And once again, he is sending them out. But the truth of the matter is that they would have caught neither fish nor faith if they had not listened to Jesus. So now what? The call to catch and share faith is an important task. It is more important than catching fish. So each of us has our own jobs in life to do, right? The fishermen were fishermen. Their job was to catch fish. We all have our own jobs, our own tasks in life to do. And we want to provide a way for ourselves and for our families in this world. God wants us to do that too. And so God has given all of us talents and abilities so that we can use those talents to serve the people around us. It is important that we catch fish, right? That kind of thing. We, like the fishermen, each have things that we are good at, and we hope to make a living doing those things. And God said 
He would provide everything we need in this life. If we believe that God's word is true, we believe that we will, that God will provide everything we need, even if it doesn't look like it sometimes. But Jesus does not give us these spiritual gifts just so that we can succeed in this life. There is more to it. He provides faith so that we can attain eternal life. That is the bigger deal. And now Jesus is sending us out into the world. He is sending every single one of us out of this boat. <laughs> this is this little navy, this nave, this upside down ship. He's sending us out into the world to share the message of salvation in his name. For many of us, this work starts at home. We bring our children to Sunday school. We bring our children to church and worship. We teach our children how to pray. Maybe it's at mealtime, maybe it's at bedtime. We begin our task of sharing faith, our faith, with our children and with the people around us because we said we would do it. We made a promise. Do you remember that promise in holy baptism? We all made promises. If you have children, you made promise to those children that you were going to bring them to worship in God's house with God's faithful people. The promise that we would teach our children the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments. And next time, <clears throat> excuse me, next time we celebrate Holy Communion in this space, I want you to listen carefully to the promise that all of us make to that new child of God that we all become a part of the same family of faith. We make promises to our children, but in that same moment we make promises to God that we will catch the faith, and when it's here, we will share it. It was not enough for the disciples to just believe. They needed to listen to Jesus too. Okay, it, it goes from believing from the heart to, <laughs> to the ears, to sharing, to the hands and the feet and the voice, whatever, whatever, whatever way God has given you to share that faith. It needs to go out. Jesus stands nearby now and he asks us how it's going. Any fish? <laughs> How's it going? And we gather here for just a few moments, really, each week. But from this time and from this space, God is sending us out in many, many directions all around. And the purpose for that sending is so that we can tell other people about Jesus and his amazing grace and his love and his saving uh, grace. By faith, we believe that the Easter message is really true. By faith, we believe that Jesus is actually alive. This is not just a story. By faith, we believe that there is new life in his name. So now that we have faith, now that Jesus has spoken to us and sends us out into the world, we need to be willing to take those next steps of faith to follow where Jesus is leading the way. He, he would not send us out alone. He promised to be with us. And he wants us to succeed in everything we do. He wants us to believe. And Jesus will do anything it takes to help us believe. But in the final analysis, faith is still faith. And it is up to us to take that next step. Now we pray for courage to use that faith that lives within us. Let us pray. <clears throat> Loving Jesus, you call us your friends 
Help us to be faithfully yours. Help us to love you as you love us. Help us to love one another as you have commanded us. Help us to go where you send us and give us strength and courage and faith to take those next steps. As we have gathered here today, may we be refreshed and empowered by your word that we might hear your voice and catch the faith and faithfully go where you send us so that we may share your life-giving name. Amen. <clears throat> And as we have that faith, we confess what that faith is with the words of the Apostles' Creed. It is uh, printed in your worship folder. <clears throat> I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. <clears throat> We ask our ushers to wait upon us now for our offering. Praise 
praise and thanks to you, holy God. Salvation belongs to our God and to Christ the Lamb forever and ever. Loving God, you have claimed us in holy baptism. You have sent us into this world to share the good news of your love and new life in your name. Help us to share that message with a renewed spirit. We thank you for your word. Through your word, you speak directly to us. May we hear your voice and know that your word is a life-giving word. We carry this word with us wherever we go. As we gather from day to day, from week to week, we hear your word. We sing your praises. We pray and confess a faith that changes our lives and saves our souls. Help us find it in our hearts that we would do these things with our brothers and sisters in faith, and in that way strengthen the entire community of faith. As we wait and wait and wait for spring, help us to find something of this time of year to enjoy. Lift our spirits in the hope of the new life of spring. Lift our spirits too in the hope of the greater, the greatest new life with you now and forever. We pray too for those we know who are in need of your healing touch, healing of body and mind and spirit. We think today of Nancy, Cindy, Stella, Shirley, Hanley, TJ, and others that we name before you now in the silence of our own hearts. Watch over those for whom we pray. We thank you, Lord, for your grace. And we offer the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I will exalt you, O Lord, because you have lifted me up and have not let my enemies triumph over me. O Lord my God, I cried out to you and you restored me to health. You brought me up, O Lord, from the dead. You restored my life as I was going down to the grave. Sing praise to the Lord, all you faithful. Give thanks in holy remembrance. God's wrath is short. God's favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping spends the night, but joy comes in the morning. While I felt secure, I said, I shall never be disturbed. You, Lord, with your favor made me as strong as the mountains. Then you hid your face and I was filled with fear. I cried to you, O Lord. I pleaded with my Lord saying, what profit is there in my blood if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? or declare your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. O Lord, be my helper. You have turned my wailing into dancing. You have put off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. Therefore, my heart sings to you without ceasing. O Lord, my God, I will give you thanks forever. Amen. Would you please stand as we receive the blessing? <clears throat> the Lord bless you and keep you.
The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We go in peace now to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our final hymn, verses 1, 4, and 5, crown him with many crowns. Eternity. 